Here I'm going to be looking at permutations and combinations again. There was an introductory video where I looked at how to calculate the number of arrangements of objects, starting with fundamental principles of counting. And right now what I'm going to do is go through some exam style questions based around permutations and combinations. So this question starts off, in how many ways can the letters of the word history be arranged if each letter was used once? So what you could do is you can say, right, there are seven letters, so the answer is going to be well, seven options for the first box, six options then if each letter is going to be used once, then five, then four, then three, then two, then one. And using the fundamental principle of counting we looked at before, we multiply those and that gives me an answer of 5,040. And when you multiply any natural number by its predecessor, so in descending order all the way down to 1. That is known as factorial, so that is just going to be 7 factorial, which is 5040. So that's the answer. So instead of doing the first method, you could just do the second method, 5040. The only stipulation for the first one was that you had to use each letter once. Well, in the second one, the letter H must be first. So if you're looking at the box method there, and you wouldn't have to draw this out every time, but it's really useful for these types of questions. So in the first one, how many choices do we have? Well, we've only got one choice because H has to be used. Well, for the second one, then if H is used, we've got six, then by five, four, three, two, one. So the answer there is just one times six factorial, which is six factorial, which is 720. Okay, so you limit your choices quite a bit there. Okay, so the vowels must be put together. So the letters we're using was of the word history, and we know that there's two vowels. So that gives me 2 factorial by 6 factorial, which is 2 times 6 factorial is 720. So we have 1440. And the reason for that is because there are six different places that those two vowels could stick together. There, there there, 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 or there. So that's why it's going to be 2 factorial by 6 factorial, because we're not saying they have to be in the first position right there. They can be in any position. So next question, how many different teams of 15 players can be chosen from a panel of 20 if the captain must be included? So it's just teams of 15 players. It doesn't say they have to be in the same order, so we're talking about combinations. If the captain wasn't included, we would have 20C15, but because the captain has to be included, we're now only choosing from 19 people effectively, because it's going to be 1 times 19C15, C14, sorry, which gives me a result of 11,628. So just remember these are combinations because the order doesn't matter of the arrangements. And if you want to know more about the combinations, have a look back at the initial combination video. Now, if two players refuse to play on the same team, the easiest way to think about this, and this happens when you're doing some probability calculations, when you're looking at the probability of an event not occurring. Well, that's 1 minus the probability of the event occurring. And we can look at the same strategy here. So two players refuse to play on the same team. So we can look at the total number of teams and then look at the total number of teams that include those two players. So there we have 18C13, because we're just choosing 13 from a total of 18. So we're going to look at the total number of teams minus the number of teams including those two players. So that gives me a total result of 6,936. So here we're going to be looking at the N, C, or combination. What that means is looking at the total number of combinations of N objects taking or of them at a time. And in the previous video, well, we didn't look at this notation. That's just another way of saying it. Um, and we know that that is equal to N factorial all over N minus or factorial times or factorial. So the crucial bit of information there, you're told that or plus 3 is not equal to this. But what we can say is um, that if you're choosing or objects from n objects, that is the same result as choosing n minus or objects from n objects. 
So for example, if you're choosing three objects from five, that's going to be the same as choosing five minus three, which is two objects from five. You have the same number of choices. Um, if you So if you do the maths there, on the left-hand side, you've got five factorial over three factorial times two factorial, which is equal to five factorial over two factorial times three factorial, which is obviously the same. So an important thing, if we're told that that's not equal, well, n c or is the same as n c n minus or. So therefore, 15 c or plus 3 is equal to 15 over 15 minus or plus 3. And we can see that that's equal to 15 c 4 or minus 13. Well, if in this question you're choosing a certain number of objects here from a total of 15, and that's equal to the same thing as choosing this number of objects from 15, well, then the number of objects you're choosing from 15 must be the same. So 15 minus or plus 3 is equal to 4 or minus 13. And from that and rearranging, we have 25 is equal to 5 or. So therefore, or is just equal to 5. OK, so I'm just going to quickly answer a probability question here. How we find the probability of any event happening is we look at the number of successful outcomes and divide that by the total number of outcomes. And you're told that the discs are all the same colour here. A bag contains ye five yellow, three green, six blue and two black discs. If four discs are chosen at random, find the probability that the discs are all the same colour. Well, the total number of outcomes here is going to be 16C4. We're taking four objects from 16. That's the total number of outcomes. OK, the number of successful outcomes. The four discs are chosen at random. We want the probability that they are all the same colour. So in probability, if there's one event or another event likely, then you add the probabilities together. So that's how we have five, or four from five and four from six and added them together. And in total, we get one over 91. So now we're looking at a situation where the discs are all different coloured. So what we do is the total number of outcomes is four discs from 16. If they're all different colored, then the first one could be you have a choice of one from five, and the second one had to be a different one, that's a choice of one from six, and the third one had to be a different color, that's one from three, and the fourth one, one from choice of two. And that gives me a total of nine over 91. Now the next question, two of the discs are black. Well, the total number of options is 16C4. You have a chance of two of those discs being black, which is 2C2, two two, and two of the discs not being black, which is 14C2. Uh, two. And that gives you an overall answer of 1 in 20. So there's some permutations and combinations questions, uh, including a bit of probability.